African slaves were first brought to Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. By the 1680s, slave labor was important from the tobacco plantations of the Chesapeake to the rice fields of South Carolina, and disagreement over slavery would ultimately affect the lives of all Americans. Today, I don't think people like to talk about slavery very much. It's a, a topic that Americans want to try to avoid. And yet, at the same time, it has such a, a, a huge impact on the people that we became and who we are today that, that you know, it's something that needs to be addressed and people need to understand it. Well, of course, slavery was the peculiar institution that said that uh, black people who were slaves in this country were essentially property. They didn't have control over their own body. They didn't have control over their own labor, nor did they have control over their own time or family. The majority of slaves were field slaves. They worked essentially from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. There were the yard slaves, there were the artisans. Most of the uh, uh, labor that was done in the South were done by slaves, whether it was specialized labor or whether it was general labor. Outcries against slavery on moral grounds began as early as 1724, when American Quakers issued a statement against the institution. Several northern states abolished slavery, led by Rhode Island in 1774. The Northwest Ordinance excluded slavery from the new western territories, but increased cotton production in the South, fueled in 1793 by the invention of the cotton gin, a machine that could rapidly clean cotton, brought increased demand for slave labor to pick the crop. Slavery became a national debate. Books like Uncle Tom's Cabin and the 1845 autobiography of escaped Maryland slave Frederick Douglass were widely discussed. His mission was to let Northerners, particularly Northern white community, understand what the real conditions of slaves were. Because the Southern propaganda said that slavery was a good thing. It was a paternal institution. It was an institution that was uh, civilizing uh, slaves. Douglas said, not true, certainly not for the South, not for black people, and not for a country which championed itself on the respect of the individual. Political compromises in Congress helped prevent civil war for several decades, but by 1860, when an Illinois lawyer named Abraham Lincoln was elected president, it seemed unavoidable. By spring 1861, 11 southern states had withdrawn from the Union. On April 12th of that year, fighting began at Fort Sumter, the U.S. fort guarding Charleston Harbor in South Carolina. From Bull Run, Virginia, to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, across Tennessee and Georgia, even to the American West, half a million Americans would die by 1865. The Civil War ended slavery, divided families and communities, and continues to intrigue Americans today. In the end, it would come down to numbers. The North had more soldiers, more money to support and feed an army, and more factories to keep arms and supplies coming.